one more, more mechanical question. How do you change your show from, well, let's just say, a, a regular gig, you know, a gig where people are just paying, a college gig where you know, you're being brought in by somebody who sees you at a conference or something, and then the material, the, the material you prepare for, let's say, a scam school? Where, where are the changes there? That's a really good question. I try, you know, it's been about nine years that I've been doing colleges, and I have not rotated as much material in that show as I would like. I'm, I'm good for like one or two routines per year. So it's like, you know, at this point, there's a pretty decent size, you know, 50 to 80 minutes of, of B material back catalog that's kind of come and gone, and certain things have been replaced in the long term. Uh, but that's kind of a slow evolution because a lot of my extra creative time is always to building new things. Like instead of writing two or three new routines, I wrote this lecture called Scam Sasquatch and the Supernatural, which is all about, you know, the, the JREF kind of skeptic stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously that's like a good two years to, to, to first write it and then refine it and then go on from there. Uh, and now, and now same thing's happening with Scam School, where a lot of the time I would be spending into creative work for more live stuff, all of a sudden having, having uh, you know, 50, 52 shows a year, though that's a lot of, of material that I have to learn, get good enough at, and have enough of a rudimentary presentation that I can go out and just grab random people, perform it, and then teach it to the folks at home. So that's, that's a tremendous drain on the creativity. So at this point, there kind of hasn't been a big difference for Scam School live performances. That's where I'm just calling out the very best of the best. And I've yeah. got you know, so, so however many more times till I'm gonna have to put in sincere effort to writing <laughs> new material. Uh, same thing, you know, the college show, it's it's evolutionary. One of the nice things is every year there are new college students. So I know there are acts in the college market who haven't changed anything for 15 years. Every year they do the exact same, you know, 60 minute show and they know that the students are gonna be what changed. But, you know, I'm at least changing some of that stuff. And, uh, I don't know. I guess. I guess. Uh, what was the third option for uh, for like a corporate deal? I guess you. Yeah, were saying? yeah. I guess we can, we can go with corporate gig. I mean, is there much of a difference between you between a college and a corporate gig mechanically? No. Early on, I was trying to straddle that, and then I decided that it was really I was hanging myself because uh, I was I was neutering what what made my brand so powerful, and instead, what I've started doing is is I just I do. Brian stuff and Brian's situation. The only times I'll change it is if I look out and there's an inordinate number of, of kids under eight years old, then I'll throw in two or three softy routines to take out some of the parts where I'm deliberately terrifying the children. Gotcha. Uh, but, but outside of that, outside of that, I, and it's only been in the last two, two or three years that I've really been able to relax and be like, you know, this is who I am. This is what I do. I'm just going to commit to doing it all the way. You know, that's it. We're out of questions, man. Did I got uh, asked? No, 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 no. It's been fantastic, and I'm sure everybody, uh, everybody will will continue to enjoy it in all its forms as it floats around the internet from here until eternity. But thank you very, very much. If I could turn things around on you, okay. Ask you a question. Is that allowed? I know we. No, didn't sure. It. Knock it out. Let's go. In the dis because you just referenced it. You said once we release it, kind of out into the ether, and it be kind of takes on a life of its own. Yeah. It'll be seen and perceived and and dealt with in ways that none of us could have imagined. What's been the biggest surprise about how the iTrix content has been absorbed by the masses out there? Is there some place like I never would have thought of that's that's where people are, are coming to this from? Well, you want to know what? I mean, the, the biggest thing that's overachieved for us has been uh, magic fans that, uh, you know, aren't hardcore. You know, I guess initially we just kind of assumed that, you know, magicians would want... You know, professional magicians or amateur magicians would really, really be into this kind of news. But, you know, I'll tell you what, the Chris Angel's loyals, you know, for, you know, whatever, you know, people might say about him, they're a large part of the people who want to read about magic news and not just about Chris Angel, about, you know, people who just do magic. These guys are just, uh, you know, guys and girls are a teenage audience that's into magic, which I think a lot of people who put out stuff on the internet and on, on TV would really like to tap into. So... Well, and that's the thing to remember is that is that every magician is is the gateway drug. You know, yes. you know these angel people that that they just want more Chris Angel, but they come in and now they're learning about you know uh, about folks over in Europe and and you know all these brilliant names that magicians have known for years. These people are hearing from them for the first time. So I guess that's let that be a lesson to you. We are all ambassadors for magic. Exactly, exactly. But I mean that, and and you know, uh, I would say. You know, in terms of underachieving, you know, there still is a wall of magic with, with, you know, a digital line that, you know, there's a reason why, 
you know, Scam School doesn't have a 50% magician audience base. I, I would, I would kind of guess it's closer to, you know, 2025 at, at the absolute max. You know, I don't, I don't even know how we would track that. That's a really interesting, uh, I, I could tell you that, uh, you know, a, apocrypha here, but uh, the, the impression I get talking to a lot of people is we get a lot of former magicians. Almost everybody who jumps in on the forum says, oh man, I used to love magic, but I got out of it because I thought it was dorky. It wasn't cool yeah. anymore. You guys have me reinvigorated and then go out and see a bunch of stuff. But I mean, the biggest thing about, you know, the, the magic community online is that it's maybe five to 10 years behind the times digitally. I mean, this is, you know, the most thriving places to find magic news are message boards still. And, yeah. and that's something where like, you know, that has gone the way of the dodo in terms of everything else years ago. Full-time professional magicians though, right? Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, just the, the audience that's hungry for magic content, you know. But that's gotta, that's gotta change because just as, just as the internet is gonna drag most magicians kicking and streaming into more like the, 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 the magic newswire, itrix.com uh, format of, of up to the date portal blog style, you know, yeah. uh, updates. Uh, likewise, you're going to uh, you're going to be first for the younger everyone 15 and under. Nobody 15 and under is going to to go board. sign up yeah. for the message board and answer. You know what was Di Vernon's nickname in order to get in, and you know all those <laughs> all those things that they're doing, uh, and still still doing. No, none of them are going to do that. They're going to go out on YouTube, and they're already having the conversations out in the open YouTube market. I mean, that's the future. Uh, YouTube is the last uh it, it is the last magic club it's it is the ultimate magic club. it will it, be it will be the final magic club i'm yeah i'm not gonna say i mean i'm that sounds a little bit like a doom and gloom prediction but i'm just no, saying, no, I'm no. saying I, is the it is already the biggest most successful and probably the most important magic club to come along and and who's gonna who's gonna make big money is who can convince who can get away with creating YouTube in an open environment where all the secrets are openly traded between them and, uh, and w without turning uh, the masked magician you know, hate on you? If, if you can find a way to walk that line, that person is going to be incredibly successful. Well, we certainly hope so. We certainly, certainly hope so. All right. Well, thank you very, very much. I mean, this is taking a bit of an odd turn at the end, but I hope everybody enjoyed it. Of course, you can see it on YouTube, but I assume most of the people who will be watching it will be either on a a YouTube player or on YouTube itself. So, uh, Brian Brushwood, what can I say, man? You're always, uh, always dynamite for it. Well, thanks, man. It's good seeing you again.